My video for August 25th, 2017 is entitled, A Godforsaken Planet. Yesterday I came upon a longtime friend who had been struggling with an illness for a good while. I was happy to see her doing well and indicated that I had been praying for her. She made it very clear saying, there is no God. In other words, my prayers were not part of her healing. I did not have time for an extended conversation. However, her response left me thinking about all the unanswered prayers I have experienced personally. We all have things we experience in life that make, a, that make us question, don't we? Nothing is more important to me than the idea of a purposeful creation as opposed to the accidental occurrence of some evolutionary process. The latter gives me no meaning. Even if it were true, however, I would still do my best to abide by the principles that, I, that have guided my life, especially that we love one another. That is truly the foundation for co-creating a world that makes sense, as opposed to the insanity we witness on this beautiful, yet often seemingly God-forsaken planet. Yes, as I said, I uh, pondered uh, quite a bit, and even, even last night, as I was laying down to finally get some rest on a, after a very busy day, uh, the same question of, of, is there a God, uh, haunts me. Now, I do, I do pray and I do meditate regularly every day. And I have been doing that since I was a boy. <laughs> it, it's just been part of my life, uh, an important part. Yet I admit that I have unanswered prayers. So her response, there is no God, left me scratching my head because I knew this lady from church, <laughs> not, not uh, in some, you know, bar or something like that, you know, like where my son plays and uh, his music and stuff like that. And th this lady herself is a musician. Um, and I, and I, I, I've known her for many, many years, actually. Uh, and so it surprised me to hear the response, there is no God, although I have to honestly admit that uh, previous conversations that I've had with her in the past she did tell me that she had she no longer believed in God, or perhaps she never did. I, I don't remember exactly how the evolution of there is no God came to being for her. But I can understand how many people will draw that conclusion looking at the world and the planet that we live on. Uh, it does seem like a God-forsaken planet. It does seem like... Uh, if there is a God, where is he, she, it? Because it certainly seems insane. And indeed, the whole human experience to me seems insane uh, when we live our whole lives, some dying very young, some living very old, but we live our lives and nothing really changes. Everything remains the same. We are what we are till the day that we die. That's a Larry Norman song. Uh, I've mentioned that in other videos, obviously, because it's something that's indelibly imprinted on my brain, uh, in my mind. But what is this thing called human life? And, and why is it such a struggle? Why does it seem that the that the worst possible people rise to the highest level of, of power and the ability to interfere in the lives of others. I mean, I don't believe interference in others' lives is an important thing, yet to the Illuminati or to the elite establishment, they feel it absolutely necessary to impose their control and ideas on the rest of culture. They uh, do all sorts of things to keep any 
level of correction from happening. They want to keep wars going. They want to keep the money-making machine in operation. They want to keep everything on a par with what it has been in the past. And I have lived my whole life wanting change, wanting positive change, wanting to see people of high integrity with, with high values, especially the value of, of life itself, of honoring human life and honoring differences even. I, I want to see those people empowered, but the opposite seems to be the case. In fact, throughout my life, I think that there's more and more evidence that the negative factors are the ones that are more greatly empowered than the positive factors. The positive factors still exist, but they're often under attack. Now, speaking of being under attack, yesterday the news came out that the trial for some of those uh, p protesters in, out west, I think, they, I think the trial was in uh, Las Vegas, if I'm not mistaken, the, the, uh, the all Bundy situation. Uh, but the jury found a, a number of them innocent and not guilty, and they were released after being held in some cases, I think, for over a year without, you know, with spurious charges. And even with all of the instructions of the judge, uh, the jury came with a non, a, a non guilty verdict, much to the chagrin of the charlatans that run the court system and, and run the monetary system and the government and everything else, all of which, as I've said in so many times, is a criminal operation. But in any case, back to the topic here, why, why do we have to endure such tremendous hardship when there is enough wealth if it were even somewhat evenly distributed, it would make Earth a paradise if there weren't people trying to control other people. If everybody was, was simply free, so long as they didn't hurt others. That's the key, so long as they don't hurt others. In other words, love has to be the predominating force or passion or, or paradigm that drives everything else, but that's not what we see. If it were, we would live on a, in a better world. Now, some people say that we have to have the contrast. Yes, I'm, I'm all in favor of contrast. I'm all in favor of masculine and feminine energies. I'm all in favor of being able to make mistakes and learn from the mistakes that we make. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a control grid where some beings try to control others. To me, that is an abomination. That is an anomaly that has to be fixed and has to be corrected. Uh, and unless it is, it will remain a God-forsaken planet because obviously the worst elements in culture uh, human culture, I don't think that all of them are even humans that, that, that rise to these powered things, as I've said in other videos, but let's just call it human culture. The worst elements in human culture are the ones that rise to the top. They're the ones that are uh, feel the greatest need to control everybody else. And it's an insane world. It's, an, uh, it's a world that just does not make sense to me. And so I'm putting this out there and seeing what kind of response I get from others. It's not some, the first time I've dealt with this subject, obviously, uh, but it's one that keeps coming back again and again and again. And I'd really like to see resolution. I'd really like to see the kingdom of heaven manifest on earth so that there could be a more level playing field than the one in which we find ourselves. Anyway, folks, I do appreciate those of you that take time to listen and especially those of you that take time to comment. So thank you and namaste.